The life of Josephine Baker is a dazzling rags to riches story of a musical icon, stage sensation, and heroine of the French Resistance who took 20th century Europe by storm. Think Janelle Monet meets James Bond. Josephine Baker was born Frida Josephine McDonald in St. Louis, Missouri in 1906. Her mother had dreams of being a dancer, but made a living as a laundress. We're not sure who her dad was, but we do know her childhood was difficult. She worked from the age of eight and spent time as a live-in maid for a cruel employer who made Josephine sleep in a box in the basement. The East St. Louis race riots broke out in 1917, and Josephine left shortly after to pursue her dreams of stardom. She worked on some touring shows, but having already been married twice by the age of 15, she moved to New York. Neither were happy marriages, but she kept Willie Baker's surname. After landing roles in successful black stage shows, her talent, stage presence, and utterly unique dancing style got her a reputation as a funny girl. Baker was then spotted by a scout, and soon after packed her bags and set sail for Petty. Baker adored Paris, saying that the first time she danced there, it felt like a frenzy took possession of her body. Not only did Baker have that je ne sais quoi on stage, she was also a sartorial sensation, and it was in Paris the world first saw Baker's famously provocative banana skirt. Fruity. Skyrocketing to fame, Baker embarked on a world tour and opened her own cabaret club called Chez Josephine. She became one of the highest paid entertainers in the world. You can even buy a Josephine Baker doll. Baker was now making serious money and bought a luxury hotel suite. She also acquired a few pets, parakeets, monkeys, a tortoise, a horse, a goat, a pig, a chimpanzee, <laughs> Kiki the friendly snake, and of course, the diamond collar cladded Chiquita the cheetah who accompanied Baker on trips to the cinema. But animals weren't her only love. After a marriage to her manager, Giuseppe Pepito, which was probably for publicity, and several relationships with women, in 1937, she married the aptly named John Lyon. In the 1930s, she started to sing and star in movies, as if being a wildly successful performer and cat lady wasn't enough. When the Nazis invaded France in World War II, Baker joined the French Resistance. While traveling, she flirted with diplomats to gain information, stashed papers in her underwear, and had secret notes written in invisible ink on her sheet music. Move over, 007. In recognition of her courageous contributions, Baker received the Resistance Medal in 1946. Baker was a shining star in Europe, but when she returned home to segregated America, the welcome was not so warm. In 1951, she made charges of racism against the owner of the famous Stork Club in New York City for failing to serve her. She was then targeted by high-profile journalist Walter Winchell, who accused her of communism, a very serious charge at the time. As a result, Baker was placed on an FBI watch list, and her movements in and out of the U.S. were heavily restricted by the U.S. government. She toured Latin America and the Caribbean, but her FBI file meant she wasn't able to go back to the U.S. until 1963. When she did return to America, she spoke alongside Martin Luther King at the landmark 1963 Civil Rights March on Washington. After another marriage, this time to Joe Bouillon, Baker adopted 12 children that she called her Rainbow Tribe. On the 8th of April, 1975, she starred in a retrospective review in Paris, Josephine Abobineau, 1975, celebrating her 50 years in show business. It was attended by Princess Grey, Sophia Loren, Mick Jagger, Diana Roth, and Liza Minnelli, to name a few, and it was a smash! Days after this performance, she died. But in the iconic fashion we've come to expect from Josephine Baker, she was surrounded by rave reviews of her show. She continues to influence culture today, and in 2021, 46 years after her death, Josephine Baker became the first black woman memorialized at France's Pantheon. <laughs>